All right, All right. We call the meeting to order. And anything that needs to be amended on the agenda, are we good to approve as written? You're good as far as I'm concerned. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to put any time on the agenda. Open ended. You wish. So I just need a motion to approve as written. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right, we got a couple of appointments. So we'll try to get through them quickly tonight. So Gary's here to go over the replacement uh, fire truck. We talked about that the last meeting. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we've kind of gotten all the information that day, so yeah. I wanted a little bit of time to digest it. And... Yep, so um, the only one thing is there's just one change on the amount. We had 617,238, but it's actually going to be 627,908. Uh, we just missed something. So certainly Gary gave you good information on the truck itself, but he's here to answer any of your questions and talk to you a little bit about the, <clears throat> or answer any of your questions. What was the number? 627-908. And that's still with the same outfit? Yes. Still with New England. No. No, still with uh, yeah. SVI. FBI. Sorry, SVI. So I got a question. Being four wheel drive, and that's in weight. Right. Are you still single still axle? Still single axle. axle. Must be right on the edge with all the stuff you Yeah, it's, it's balanced. I'll show you the weight sheet. I have the thing here. Um, everything's designed, um, yes, for the weight on each axle versus what it has. It's a specification inside that bid of it. No, didn't feel like you needed to get in the weeds with. However, they also look at center of gravity. On four wheel drive vehicles. So, how high it up? Normally, there's like an 80% maximum, but in this case, with four wheel drive, I think it was 83% 83 above center line. So, that's, uh, yeah, all those weight characteristics are very much. This is carrying water also? Carrying water. Yep. Full load. Engineers are going to look at it from the full, full complement. So, we, we had gotten, um, well, there was a bid packet that you'd put together with the specifications that got sent off to the bidders. Mm -hmm. And we had gotten three bids back, which ranged, you know, um, you know, from really low to two that were kind of in the same ballpark. Could you just give us just a, a high level cliff notes version of of the three bids and why you chose the one you did? Um, to start with, they're all bid fairly comparable. We tried to keep it as apples to apples as possible and look at options mm -hmm. and exceptions. Mm -hmm. Um, that they throw at us based on what their engineers tell them that this is possible, it's not possible. Uh, so we initially worked very hard and closely with Denji, uh, with Larry Denji, was the original uh, fellow we started talking to and working with. Larry, unfortunately, passed away on the 4th of July. So, and it's a family-owned business, which complicated the problem a little bit more for us. Um, when we got digging into the type of equipment that they were specking out, uh, we allowed the, the the three different groups to do their own thing as far as specking, whether it was this pump or that pump, or shifting mechanisms for transferring the pump into gear, whether it's air or electric or light packages, I mean, all of it. Um, and then I went back and we began to look at each one of the things that they specified because they took an exceptional honor. They, they indicated that they had changed for whatever reason. Um, and once we dug through that, we found that there were several problems in some of the, in two of the bids. Uh, one of the bids was more problematic than the other, and that was the original one, Denji, um, which came in $110,000 underbid on it, which for me was a red flag anyway, because I don't know how anybody can do that. And you stay in business when you're expecting the same truck, and it's a it's a uh, a commercial chassis, so that, that price is pretty well fixed in stone. Mm -hmm. And then all you have is the addition of what you're going to have put in place on it. So that became a bit of a red flag. The lack of leadership at that company became a red flag. Where they were going to be in the future became a red flag. When we design and look at a truck, and we're going to put this much money and this much investment into a truck, we want to make sure that their service have to sell for at least the next 10 years or better. Um, because they're the ones that put it together. They're the ones that know how the package works um, technically. So we were a little bit concerned of their longevity remaining in the market. Um, so there were a lot of red flags that popped up, popped up. And then when we began looking at some of the equipment, some of the equipment became suspect. Uh, for instance, the pump side is what I 
indicated there a particular pump size. Mm -hmm. Only one of the manufacturers picked up and said, you want 1,500 gallons a minute, we have to use this pump, can't use this, because it's not rated at that. We went back and dug around. Well, the third party, the New England fire apparatus, just dropped the number down to 1,500 and 1,250, which made them pretty much irresponsible at that point because we wanted 1,500. Dingy made no comments whatsoever. They maintained an air-operated transfer system for transferring it into pump. So did the other folks. But then when we went back and looked at I talked to other engineers, and they all agreed that it was going to, the only thing that was going to work was electric. This was the only pump that was capable of doing the job, the only pump capable of fitting on a four-wheel drive format. The problems compounded from a four-wheel drive point of view because of the positioning of the transfer case for the four-wheel drive. It comes all the way to the back, and it's actually where the, typically the pump transfer goes. So in order to get enough of a drive shaft up from, it became this impossible concept. Uh, the original truck we had, they mounted the pump on the rear. Mm -hmm. And in order to get that, that was the only way that was gonna fit on a four wheel drive with two seats in it. And to do that, they had to add an entire new drive shaft all the way to the rear, to the pump itself and, and lay it on top of the axle, which caused enormous problems, especially when it got bumped in the rear end on the interstate, destroyed that transfer case, destroyed the pump the gone deal. So those are a lot of the design characteristics of why we kind of started pumping it, you know, started looking a little bit harder. What was good. And then there were simple things. Uh, the way they designed packages like the lighting in the compartment. Um, we require that lighting at three in the morning. You can't see what's in that compartment. Uh, you might grab the wrong thing, wrong size. It adds time, whatever. So in order to get the lighting to fit inside the compartment with hinges versus one with the roll-up doors, it's a whole different package. Um, we also wanted to make sure that whatever we did going forward was enough uh, of a technical, that we were staying on top of the technical stuff, that we could replace things in the future, that we could repair or fix or whatever. And uh, most of the stuff under Dingy's bid, which became part of the specs that we put out, uh, were actually old stuff. So it was uh, some of it was actually hard to get. One of the manufacturers, the New England one, picked up on a couple of those items, but not all of them. So they basically kept it. They just basically bid it. Um, and also, they never contacted us to find out what our intent was. What were we trying to do? What were we trying to accomplish? What were we were, were looking at? So they just submitted a bid based on specs. Um, they did not include, for instance, correct seating in the truck uh, because the seats have to have the air packs. We, we sit on because we went with the five seat version versus two seat version. So this air packs had to get mounted into the seats. They didn't change those seats. That's that's fifteen hundred dollars seat. So their bid became irresponsible based on, on on just what they left out and what they didn't cover. Um, on the on the other hand, Dingy was irresponsible. It was hard to believe because of the dollars involved. What they think, but I think they left on the table. We had no warranty information from them. We had nothing. So it became a more of a risk. What kind of risk are we putting the town on when it came down to that? So to avoid the risk, because the truck won't become available for at least a year out, um, there's no way to change course once you commit to it. Um, well, I probably won't be here for that part of it. So whatever has to happen needs to go as smoothly as possible. So our plan at this point is to make, you know, I'll reach out to the state and the insurance company tomorrow, let them know what the cost was for the replacement truck, which was the one we bought from Norwich, plus some things we had to do to that and um, <clears throat> add that in and let them know about this. And because we can't, uh, we need their check before we can sign the the paperwork because once Gary or I sign the paperwork, the clock is ticking and we need the state's money. So I'm going to reach out tomorrow to that um, insurance agent and that um, uh, person from the state and just let them know, look, here's the bids. It was a responsible bid package. If you haven't, what do you need for documentation? And just let them know. Um, there's discount money involved. That's what there's also money. discount money That's involved. True. If we but probably 20 on this particular with the option package around 23,000 in discount. If we can get that money in the house and get it going. Yeah. yeah. So what happens uh, <laughs> like a year from now when, well, the, at least the one we were going with, I think they said they would have it 365 days or something. But 
so when we when we receive the new truck, what happens with the the used truck we have now? We do we have to sell that? No. Or do we or what are our plans with that truck at this point? Are we going to keep it or my do we even have a place to put it? Or <laughs> my plan would be to keep it. Um, to, to start with, it's better than the one we had. I'll, I'll hit the side. Um, it's it's better put together. It's got a better end pump on it. Um, it's got five seats versus two. It means we can put our people in the truck uh, instead of depending on them in their own vehicles to get to where they're going. Um, it's been uh, it's been updated at least once in the past. We're still going to fall underneath OSHA's upcoming requirements on trucks that I can't get a pass. However, it would do great in the reserve status. The one thing you do not want to do, especially in this town, because of the structures involved and, and the, uh, the the difficulty in, in accessing a lot of these properties, is end up with one pump, which is what we were down to, and that pump was questioned. It was on a 22, 23 year old frame. Um, so having one, that was my nightmare for that we got this other truck. Mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, um, it's great you can call in the mutual aid, but that's still 15, 18 minutes. You know, once you understand what you have. So, so what would, would we what would we I mean I know it's a question for another day, but what would we do with that? Like how would we preserve that truck or keep it? You know, do we have room at the fire station? If we don't, where would we put it? Because you know, if we leave it outside, you know it's gonna deteriorate faster. No, there's no way to put it outside. I wouldn't right. we would never think of that. Um the uh the plan, the longer term plan, right now our, a lot of our space has been involved with traders. <laughs> it deteriorates me to no end. But so the idea here is going forward the next year or two is we create a pad, maybe a pole barn with a lock fence that we can put our trailer in and keep them out of the station, in which case we can fit this truck we have. In the station. Plus the additional truck, everything will fit in there just fine. I act like it's supposed to act. Mm -hmm. It's our station. Um, at some point, we're, it, 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 the, the problem is complicated by a replacement cycle um, as far as replacing the engine that we do have, which, which is coming up next. The one we lost was still a good eight years out. So, um, so we're, now we're having to pull it forward. It doesn't deviate from the fact that we have an engine that's going to have to be replaced relatively quickly. Um, it's just wearing out. There's just no way around that. Um, so, uh, at some point, that's the truck that's probably going to go away, and we'll keep one in reserve. But that reserve truck, once 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 the new truck gets here, that'll be able to serve a large portion. Of what we need a new engine to do because it's an engine type set up a little different but it will do the job for a while then we've replaced the engine package with pumper because everybody knows it has. um and we can work on that one and then whatever we have in reserve at that time after the new truck comes and we can run it through a refurbished process to do. Um, and based on what we find and see any mechanics of it perhaps we can keep it around another five to eight years so the other thing to think about too is when the new fire truck comes, we still have to buy hose and we're still going to have, so there's going to be some over the next, you know, in the next budget cycle and the budget cycle after that, Gary and I spoke about that briefly today is we're going to have to be setting aside money in this next cycle and the cycle after that to do some of the outfitting. Cause some of the stuff, the hose, that sort of thing wasn't destroyed. It just needed to be replaced anyway. So there are some things that when this new truck comes that are still going to need it you know, a few things that, but that we will plan for. Um, and um, the other thing that Gary had brought up um, in a conversation with me, which he can elaborate on was the fact that we also are looking for outside of this, an additional $4,000. We are going to need to send two people to South Dakota where they're building, where they're building the truck. And maybe Gary can, Explain that a little better. Yeah, this package is the SDI, the, the, their main facility, which is actually a Rosenbauer. If you know anything about fire trucks, it's an older, it's a, a long established truck company. Um, has a their main manufacturing facility is in South Dakota, Lions, Lions. Um, I believe that's right. Um, so it, most of the truck will be built there, but it'll come back to Massachusetts to be outfitted shelled, decaled, final touches done on it, everything, and then for the training for us. And then these SVI folks will actually also do things like put our tools in place, set up, set up the truck how we need it to be set up. So we just basically roll out of the 
as a matter of fact, out of the facility there, um, ready to go to work. There won't be any, any delays on that. Um, and that's just a part of the service that they provide. Um, however, there is a final viewing that you need to take, um, what they call the final step in the manufacturing process, where you really need to put eyeballs on it and make sure that they did put that cabinet there. Right? They, they can send you pictures all day long, but there's, but you also are able at that point to give the group that goes one, two, three, whatever, if they're going to be longer term, and that's the only ones I would send with longer term, especially officers, was they have the ability then to recognize and understand how trucks are built. Because this is not an easy process. It's a it's a very long term deal. It takes a lot of it's a lot of thinking, a lot of ways to do things, a lot of understanding you have to have. So it's, it would be an educational advantage to the department and to the town as well. So that's something we can budget for in their regular budget, but it's something to be aware of that we'll need to budget for. And since, you know, I wasn't, once Gary explained it to me, I was like, well, that makes total sense. That obviously that's the only time you're going to have to correct anything is going to be there before it comes to Massachusetts. And then we will have to go to Massachusetts a couple of times, uh, officers and different trainings and stuff. They will have to travel, but Massachusetts is Massachusetts. It's not, you know, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, you know, it's a long process and I'm not sure how involved the select board has ever been in, you know, purchasing a fire truck. So and additionally, the <laughs> two manufacturers were two years, two and a half years, even up to three years on the package still being delivered. So that still lifes us out a year and a half or better on, on having a replacement vehicle that would do the job. Yeah. And the problem with that kind of fear period of time is they reserve the right to change the price. So if the pump price goes up, well, they got to go out with the pump price. If the chassis price goes up, they're going to take the chassis price up. So that's kind of why we're pushing now for the bid, getting it in, getting it done, getting state money in place. Um, but it's also why we want to keep that that production amount of time down to the minimum as we can keep it. If the price goes down, it stays the same? Nope. <laughs> oh, well, it stays the same. Yeah. Excuse me how it works, right? Yeah, yes. So what are the chances that the state's going to pony up on check? Well, pretty quick, pretty quick. Over the news. Know, we're going to find out, you know, I mean, they have, you know, since we have made, you know, contact and they've made the agreement um, and, and certainly the governor is aware of that. I, I actually think it will be fine. I, I expect right. we'll see, a, you know. Well, they gave us a time period in the bid package for the discounting as far as having to check X number of people back and sign the contract. Um, I have had conversations with them to see if there was a way that we could push that out a little bit because of the state's involvement, the state's mm -hmm. notorious. Yeah, so I'm hoping that, yeah, so I, I actually don't see a big difficulty here. The the gentleman we've been dealing with has been good, and, and the lady too as well. And like I said, I mean, it came right from the governor's office. So I we can certainly provide them with any bid documentation, whatever they need. So, so you know, I'm very happy. So the net of the town is, what, the four grand? Would be the four grand it'll be hoses. Yeah. Radios, things like that. Yeah, the radio would be a different package. Yeah, different things, like yeah, things like that. Things yeah. like that, but we'll have a better, you know, certainly uh as it comes. And that's something that we could just build into our regular budget. So right. and it might be even that, that we can write a grant on it. Yeah. Um, as far as AFG grants, because they do what they call equipment loadouts for mm -hmm. engine trucks and whatnot. If yeah. I can get our numbers up. We have a good story yeah, we have for the story. AFG grant. So, uh, yeah. and Gary was successful. Don't forget, he was successful with the AFG grant for and got you one hundred thirty nine thousand or, or more. Two hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, I couldn't remember. I like, we got a bunch. Yeah. Anyways, wow. that was due to Gary's work. So, um, he's certainly no uh, stranger to the process. Well, we appreciate your hard work on this. It mm -hmm. sounds yeah. like it's not not an easy process. No, when he yeah. sent me the uh, specs, I was like, he's like, you want to look at these? I'm like. Sure, I what I can't, I don't know what some of this stuff is. So, what we do? Thank God, it's what he does. So, so what do you need? You just need a motion. We need a motion us. to authorize uh, Gary or myself to sign the paperwork for the six twenty seven nine zero eight and award the bid to SVI. Okay, so moved. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. you go. All right, so I'll reach out. <clears throat> yeah, I'll reach out to the state tomorrow, Gary, and CC you on the email so you know what they've said.
Mm -hmm. All right. Next must be Brian. Yes. Oh, look at <laughs> We're that. Hoping. If, if yeah. you're not, then I don't know why you're here. But <laughs> I'm looking Hi. at the list and there's nobody else. So. Hi, Brian. <laughs> so I gave them the printout that you sent me and the agenda and, and everything. So thank you for that. That was very yeah. helpful. Um, okay. So hello, everyone. I'm Brian Cabal. I'm coming planner with the Two Rivers of Iquichi Regional Commission. I believe it's my first time meeting most people here. Um, so do you want to, I should tell you, so this is Jordan, Garo, Dave Eddy, I'm obviously Therese Thanks. Kirby, Chris Jarvis, Paul Valley, Denise Gilmet, and then our minute taker, Julie Krause, just so oh, you know who you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, this is going to be tough. <laughs> Uh, well, thanks for uh, agreeing to get me on the agenda. Um, so I have some good news. You guys are now a part of a grant of the Thriving Communities Program. This is a uh, U.S. Department of Transportation funded grant for the next three years. Um, and this is sort of a new thing that the Department of Transportation is doing. They've only had this program for two years. So you're in the second year of this. Um, to give you a little of the backstory, so last fall, Tuvers reached out uh, asking for a letter of support for this grant pro uh, program. We applied with Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission over in New Hampshire. Um, we didn't expect to win this award. Uh, it turns out we did win it. <laughs> um, so it's unexpected, but it's 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 really nice um, because you, along with five other towns on the Vermont side, um, get to participate in this program. And this will um, provide Two Rivers an opportunity to provide transportation planning services uh, tailored to Bethel and um, focus on both technical assistance and capacity building. There's sort of a two-part focus of this grant program. Um, there's also going to be a sub-award uh, available to the town or several probably small sub-awards available to the town. Um, these sub-awards will not be used on capital projects directly, but they can go into things like supporting a planning study or um, a engineering or design plan, uh, something of that nature. Uh, they can also go in towards like public engagement activities. So that's another possible thing. Uh, the total award, I should say, for two rivers portion of it will cover about 50% of my work for the next three years. And also several other members of our teams will be of, of two rivers will be working with the town on this as well. So that means that I can step in and there's certain tasks that I can assist the town with. Um, the first would be uh, helping the town apply for grants and administering grants. Um, that's something that the town wants to take on. That's something I'd be happy to, to work with. There's also a um, component on this uh, enabling for trainings and capacity building through that or through networking and, and, and learning from other towns. That's another portion of this grant. Uh, we can also help with project management for transportation projects, um, something else the town might be interested in, um, as well as planning and scoping for transportation projects. So that's another sort of focus we can take on. And we can also... Um, work with the town to sort of integrate transportation planning with planning for other factors like housing, safety, livability. Um, it can, you know, sort of integrate the, the transportation planning here with other things. So that's another sort of part of it. And then some more sort of um, concrete things we can do. We can, we can work on uh, transportation capital budgeting for the town as well. We can also look at uh, town plans, and sort of amending them uh, to encourage um, integration of transportation planning with other factors, uh, as well as looking at bylaws for the same. So those are just some some of the things that we can do with this grant program. So that's sort of the a nutshell of the tasks involved in this and the backstory of how we've gotten to this point where you've now part of a grant program. Um, so the next step with the DOT is creating what's called a community work plan. So one for the town, which is gonna look at a few different things. It's gonna look at it, it's gonna provide like an overview of the community. It's also going to need to identify the transportation related challenges facing the community, uh, goals that the town wishes to accomplish through this grant program and the actual tasks that the town wants to take on. Um, 
So, so that's something you'll sit down with us yeah. the group that we come up with to do that. And we can certainly talk about that now. Um, some towns, uh, <laughs> talk with them about how they want to approach doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, some are interested in having sort of like a open public forum, like a visioning session. People can come give their opinion, different stakeholder groups in the town can do that. Others, maybe the creation of a steering committee, which will help with the creation of the community work plan. So I propose that question to you. Um, think about how it maybe would make sense here. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, in Royalton, which is also a part of this, we're talking about creating a steering committee and doing a visioning session. Other towns are more focused on one or the other. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that after talking to you and, and going through the paperwork again, and just, you know, my recommendation to the board was <clears throat> that maybe we do a small steering committee, a couple select board members, you know, maybe somebody from Bethel Mills, the road foreman, you know, cause some of this stuff, obviously we've been at, we're pretty prolific um, in grant writing and we're currently using two rivers to help. Um, we're gonna apply for a planning grant because we're updating the town plan right now. Obviously Rita and I do a lot of projects. She does project management for us. So certainly um, we're currently also working on our own doing um, a gravel road inventory. And I just wrote a grant for like 12,000 some change to get to do another um, road inventory, which Two Rivers is going to be doing for us. So we actually have a lot of irons in the fire, which is good. So I kind of feel like uh, a, an in-house kind of steering committee, myself, a couple board members, road foreman, and, you know, maybe somebody from like Bethel Mills because they flood, you know, they kind of can do the economic development, plus they flood a lot at Marsh Meadow. So considering it's flood resiliency and Bethel is, you know, pretty much just water, water everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so... I know we talked about that, um, or that was my recommendation in the packet to the select board, certainly, because sounds like we have some stuff to divvy up and mm. and figure out what we, it And we also, you know, I don't know if it goes along with, but we also have our challenges in the downtown mm -hmm. with, you know, as as anybody has ever driven through the downtown, it's very tight. Yep. It's it's mm -hmm. not, uh, not the code when it comes to... Yeah. How wide our parking is, and should we have parking on one side or both sides? Or I, I definitely getting think through we'll there and without losing a mirror. And yeah. um, I do you know, think sidewalk that. upgrades. We have a lot of sidewalk issues in the downtown, which will be a lot of. Um, don't worry, and don't forget, a lot of that stuff will be taken care of in 2027 when the state goes through. We did get verification. They're going to do the sidewalk. They put. They're going to do all the truncated domes in yeah, certain areas, and 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 then we've got you know some stuff that we need to do, mm -hmm. and then Reed and I have written another grant to get the. Uh, system for crossing on Church Street and then down by where um, oh the pedestrian yeah where so Spalding Press used to be yeah. but yeah we just have a lot going on so I think actually doing a community work plan would be nice to kind of combine all the stuff we've got going on into this right manageable plan definitely yeah so we have taken some notes on what you said yeah we've just yeah. got a lot of stuff <laughs> yeah going on it and usually you know I do the grant writing along with Greta. It usually is helpful depending on the grant or I write it. And then of course we're managing it. And you know, so I, I definitely am big on uh, somebody else managing some of the grants. Cause I've got over a million right now open in grant money. And uh, so <laughs> I'm all for it. I love to yeah. get the grants, just managing it and stuff. It's a trick. Yeah, you'll, you'll be happy to know that too. Rita is going to have some work uh, through this program. Yeah. So yeah. So, that. That'll be good. Cause I was like, so, <laughs> and then you said that in an email. So when do you really plan on starting to work on, on these projects? So in the work plan, the, is this something like, you know, the next three months you're starting to get it off the ground or where are the other towns at with this? Like, if we were going to put together a committee, when should we have that in place to start uh, our so, communication to do? So uh, it's about six weeks out and you get to submit a first draft to DOT. Um, so that's just the work plan. Right. The actual, it will be amended. They'll go back and forth uh, with me on it. And they have told us too, that the, the work plan itself is kind of always a snapshot of a moment. I mean, it'll change. Right. We think at the outset a task would make sense and then it doesn't take that out. Swap it in with something else if you wanted. Um, so that, that will be just a continuation of conversations with them. So I, I, I do will submit them in the first draft by that date. So some inputs as necessary, especially about challenges and goals, uh, would be useful to have ahead of that and as well as tasks that we think at the outset would make sense. 
um, the community profile portions of it and, and community partners identifying those, I think probably won't change. I think the community profile, but probably going to steal some parts from the town plan. Sure. You know, it, it, it already exists. They don't need to redo that. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why, why reinvent the wheel? And you guys helped the last town plan too. So you have all that stuff on. Yeah. So I guess in, so if we had a meeting. So if we set up a committee in a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and had a meeting with you, that would work for you if we did it in the next yeah. month, three weeks, month, something like yeah, that. I can yeah, follow up um, as long as you think you have an idea of, of who would want to be on it. I would assume someone from the select board, planning commission. Mm -hmm. Uh, Teresa, if you want to be on it too. Yeah, I would do it. I'm not sure I'd have anyone from the PC just because they got their hands full right now. But um, I, I was thinking two select board members um the road foreman myself because i'm also then had somehow the road commissioner but um i also write all the grants so it kind of makes sense and then i was thinking about somebody um local like a business owner so i was thinking five would be good um so i can reach out to them or i can reach out to the business owner tomorrow and see if i can't get them involved and then it would be obviously the road form is easy enough to get a hold of and it's going to be two select board volunteers so so we could probably That's have that be in you, place by the end of the month right yeah I mean, our next meeting is the 23rd yeah i really right? just so, need a second i mean i assume that you'll do it because you're doing the capital the gravel road inventory so i'm really just looking for like another select board member just need one more <laughs> Favorite, you know, <laughs> speak first <laughs> no. Dave you're really quiet over yep. there <laughs> um yeah so I just think and, and I think my question was more like if you were to tell Bethel like when I would like to start working with you yeah first of October then we'll make sure that we get yeah. our ducks in a row um so that we can you know start going through the formality of the project. and meet with him too and just say okay because then he's we can I can give you a spreadsheet, show you all the grants we have open now and, you know, whatever you need. So you can That'd see. Yeah. All right. I'll make a note to send that to you. Um, send Brian grant spreadsheet. And um, as we know, we're pretty prolific <laughs> with the grant money, but writing grants, but as Rita will say, because she ends up helping with them. But um, so, yeah. So then if we can just do that, it's just going to take a little bit of time to apparently finagle a couple of people onto the group <laughs> and let the road foreman know <laughs> that yeah. I volunteered him for some. Yeah, it's certainly it's kind of like tag you're right you're on this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah he'll, he'll it's fine. Um okay so that's that's good for the formation of it. Um right now just to pull the room I mean for challenges or goals we thought you mentioned the narrowness of space here in the town. Blood resilient infrastructure is important pedestrian accessibility as well dealing with the access through here. Mm -hmm um trails is that something maybe i would well, not really well believe it or not we're actually doing that we yeah. got a three hundred and thirty thousand yeah, dollars so grant we're actually yeah we're pretty ahead of the doing pretty of the well with the yeah. trail system yeah. yeah yeah so i mean we, i would yeah i would went, say the biggest things that have come up over the last couple of years has been obviously the um the downtown the long-term parking view of of this downtown um, also, how we can bring the businesses, you, you know, we do have quite a bit of storefronts that are empty and things like that. Like, how do we better align that? The housing mm -hmm. has been, uh, yeah. you know, hot topic everywhere. Right. Um, you know, getting individuals to want to invest in the properties and yeah. housing. Mm -hmm. We have some handicap accessibility issues in the downtown that we mm -hmm. need to address either to do you know, how and, and close lot, proximity is to a business and ramps and parking. or parking or, you know, is a big deal. Um, or and, lack and then, thereof. <laughs> and then obviously the like, <clears throat> the flood issues that challenges that we have with this town. So yeah. I think those are kind of the big ones that probably the same we share with every other town too, I imagine. <laughs> it's pretty similar. Yeah. About. yeah <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. So yeah. We're all kind of in the same boat. 
uh, community partners. You mentioned Bethel Mills as vacation. Yeah, I was thinking about Bethel Mills, especially because whenever, you know, for flood resiliency, obviously they have a great business. A little in the air so there. certainly they have a good business. So as mm -hmm. far as um, economic development, they have, you know, quite a few employees. Obviously they own multiple places around the state of Vermont. Also too, whenever it floods, they get affected. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they would be great as an economic partner, as well as a flood resiliency, you know, partner they can talk about you know their needs i think that they would be good okay and then if it comes to like you know we're talking about housing then i would get involved more like nolato who's our gw you know, yeah you know oh. main you know employer of the town as well as the school um you know it has come up quite a bit here in the last couple of years that you know, they can employ a teacher, but they can't find them at home. Yeah. <laughs> so those are challenges to, or those teachers are having to commute an hour and a half a day because yep. there's no houses local. Also could no. be something that we reach out to the local um, legislator about Kirk White. I mean, obviously that's a state issue. You know, if they're going to be three to 4,000, I know, but yeah. if he's going to be three to, we're going to be three to 4,000 housing units short by 2032, obviously they got to get off the dime mm -hmm. do something yeah. in the state. Yeah. 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 And we're not going to be able to fix that. The state has to do something right. with that. So some of these things are just, you know, going to be beyond our purview, of course, but, but certainly by helping parking and things like that, we could do our part to encourage yeah. it locally, but and we already have amended our zoning regulations to mm -hmm. um, obviously to adopt the new legislative rules as well as our own, just to make sure that people, you know, we're welcoming housing, but you know, right, right now we're in a challenge because we cannot add any more users to the water system until we finish phase two, which will finish, you know, yeah, in the next few months. Years. So, you know, there's always a, <laughs> something else happening. Right. So, but once we get that wrapped up, then I, then they'll lift that ban because we're just waiting. We need the pump station on uh, the booster pump station on Royalton Hill road to be completed. And then they'll allow us to add more users to the system. Okay. If that became an issue for someone, but right now it's. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the limiting factor on housing developing. Then. Currently yeah. Yeah. in the village. Yes. But outside of the village, no, because we right. reduce density and that's one thing they're going to reduce in the town plan. Brian, there was one area that the only acreage that the, I think it was like medium density was the only one called out specifically in the town plan. So they're going to amend the town plan to change that mm -hmm. so that it encourages growth in those areas. But it was the only one zoning district that specified the, uh, the amount of zoning required. So they're going to cut that in half. And um, so we will have definitely done our part in, you know, trying to encourage growth. Encouraging the growth. Yeah, yeah good. absolutely. That's good. Okay. Um, and I have reached out to the White River Valley Supervisory Union, trying to set up a meeting with the superintendent because we're going to be working on four of the towns in the area. So, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So we'll see what comes with that as well. Um, and the same also with I've reached out to uh, Tri Valley Transit. Yep. Nice. Coordinate with them. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. Any other potential community partners you can think of? Not off the top of my head. No. But maybe it will come out when we start doing our work plan, too. Yep. Sounds You're going to be busy. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be half of my job for the next three years. <laughs> yeah. So anything else for me before I step aside? No, I think we're good. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. In. Good to meet you. Yeah, it was nice to meet you in person. <laughs> thank you. Hey, Gary, <clears throat> I will take that just in case I have to scan it to the state tomorrow, in case they want I mean, I'll, just the one you picked and um yeah so just in case the state wants something out of it i can oh okay i don't need that i just want the one they awarded just in case who knows what they're gonna think. all right all right Okay, thank you, Gary. Yeah, thank Have you, a good Gary. evening. Was this lady going to join us remotely? Uh, no, but she's in person, right? Right, but I think she also had to be somewhere else. That's not um, early. Skip ahead and um, back, right? I think that she was saying that she had to be. Mm -hmm. Was it maybe Granville? She had to be somewhere else. So first, okay. so. So the other appointment's not here yet, but we got twenty minutes anyway. So <clears throat> why don't we go <clears throat> go to the public comment period? So if there's. Anything anybody would like to bring up? This is on the agenda. Now's your time. No hands. So I guess we can do that. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Um, I this evening I have a question. It's more of a curiosity question um, because I know your routines are, you know, um, at the end you look at committee minutes and um, and because of where the recreation committee has their meeting at the first part of the and and so in July, the July minutes were looked at, you know, at the end of July. During August, no August recreation committee minutes were looked at. So I was just curious if you're just skipping and that were they in the packet? No, they've not been in it. Oh, the must, then it was probably just a mistake. Usually when you send them, Kelly automatically prints them out and puts them in the bucket, which is, we have like a select board folder yeah. thing. And so I haven't, if so, they weren't in there, so, I didn't notice. So they have not been in the packet. Okay, so I'll have so, Kelly. So I didn't know if you wanted to skip over no. August yeah. and, and just not do it um, for this year i'll just have kelly put them in the next packet i didn't even realize you right. know we get so many that i don't right. even right. i just put them in the so that's my curiosity oh. question so yeah. i assume that at the next select board meeting you'll have the august minutes and, and september. september yes so. yeah no thanks yeah very good I, was know. there anything good in there you want to tell us <laughs> no. no okay yeah, no, sorry about that. I'm sure Kelly just very happy, wonderful summer. Yeah. A lot of and all our programs worked well, and we're very encouraging about mm -hmm. um, Ford Festival 5K. That's looking good. We right. have that um, yeah, in the works, so we're excited about Ford Festival and our 5Ks. Did you get your bandanas? Yeah, we they're all on order. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, yeah. good, good. So and they're going to be so cute with people running on them. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's great. So I, I I know that it's come up before, so I should just tell you <clears throat> that obviously this year we didn't have a pool director. And uh, so we kind of made do with what we could and um, put a couple people together, trying to get some managers and tried to, you know, it, it wasn't perfect. And um, so at this point, my opinion is if we don't have a pool director, we won't open the pool next year. I just can't do it without. Wait, you? Yeah, I thought it was so fun and it went so well. I thought yeah. that event went great yeah. and it was fun. I was making my floats and, um, but yeah. so. Really well. Yeah. So we're. You know, we've really put the word out. We're talking to people. We talk to people during the summer. We've talked, and um, you know, so we're really trying to plant that seed. And I've talked. I talked to a few people that a couple people that night, and I'm like, oh wow, well, you know, have you considered the pool director? You know, so mm -hmm. to try to. So we are. So if you think of anyone, I mean, I've talked to Lindsay. I've talked. Have, <laughs> like, you, have I, you tried like um, anybody at the school? Because yeah. I was thinking like. School's I mean, out during that period oh, of time. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody that would be interested in being in the pool. Yeah, Dietrich put it in yeah. the um, Zaytree. To pass yeah. athletic the directors, directors that are retired. Yeah. yeah, and Dietrich put it in. She had it sent out. She had them post it so that all the um, teachers and assistants could see it. We She fought this crazy state college website job board. I thought she was going to lose her mind trying to get it posted so that he had college kids could see it for summer. And she sent it to VTC. Anybody we think of, we, we sent them the job posting and Love school, all those places. Oh yeah. And um, so it, <laughs> it was a trick, but it's just so much to it that it, that it's hard to, to do it. Not, not that it, we didn't, you know, what we does, had a great um, season. It, it just was. What does Randolph do? Hmm. Do they have a pool director? Yeah, they have. And in fact, their pool season is longer than ours. Yeah, their pool is open longer. Than yeah, and I'm not sure what they did this year because they had they have a rec director, and didn't yeah. the rec director act as the pool director? No, 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 it was a no the issue. rec director. Um, but they did have because the rec director I've seen because I play tennis and yeah, and so I see the rec director, but um. The rec director was saying that they were had trouble about lifeguards. Yeah, they were low on lifeguard <clears throat> stuff too. Yeah, and they're they're having a 
a very hard time getting life. Yeah. I mean, we did, we were lucky this year, you know, we're always, Ellie knows every time you go into it, you're just not sure. And less and less teenagers are interested. And we have talked, you know, to people, Dietrich, Ellie, everybody about, you know, if you have a high school student, you know, we pay for them to get certified, you know, to go to the classes, to do all that. Yeah. As far as I know, um, when we were talking to the um, rec director in Randolph, I wasn't sure that they pay for their training, mm -hmm. but you know, yeah, but I mean, but I, I, I said to her, we, we pay. Mm -hmm. When I was talking to her about lifeguards, yeah, uh, I said we pay for their their yeah. training, so yeah. it, you know they don't have to worry about that. We right. to and then the whole the other let's add another layer of difficulty to it is the American Red Cross. They have made it even more difficult. So there's less, you know, to become to teach that to be a trainer. Exactly. It's very difficult to get that, and now. We actually had someone go to a class in West Leb. Red Cross will not let them teach with if they don't have five students. They had four. Oh, my goodness. So they were signed up. They were paid. And the teacher's like, nope, I need one more person. And so <clears throat> they couldn't do the class. So it's even more difficult. We've actually talked about looking at other places other than um, – is there other certifications American, that you can we've get other American Red Cross? Well, we've looked at different options. There's like Swim USA. There's a couple, and um, so not so we're you know talking about that as well. It's just um, it's, hmm. it's difficult to to you know sort it out right now. And um, so anyway, so just so people know, you know, we're we're all looking for lifeguards. We did get a couple of great new additions to the staff last year. What Ellen, yes. and we are trying to talk her into becoming the pool director and her daughter, Zoe, and then Addison from Rochester. So we, we've got some new, yeah, but yeah, they were good. yeah, Ellen was, she was great. Wasn't she? She helped Ellie with yeah. bingo and stuff. So, you know, yeah. so we're just fingers crossed, right? Do you have the job description for the pool director? Yeah. I think it's on the website. You still. can send it to me. I'll, um, I'll follow back up with Jamie again, and maybe we can advertise it at the schools again. And maybe yeah, the very city pulled it together at the last minute. They kept saying, "Well, I think pool, it... no pool, no pool," and then all of a sudden, some people finally stepped forward right. and they opened up late. But they and finally that's what I'm opened thinking right now. If we get out in front of it and say we're no. not going to have the pool open, if we don't get somebody, maybe there's somebody that says, oh, "Okay, maybe I could do it." Or... And we did say that we actually had the posting up all year oh, last yeah. year at the pool yeah. and this year, and so we did. Yeah. you know, we've been um, do that. And we talked to people too and said, "Hey, you know." Like, well, you know, they were a couple of people were upset because we didn't have as many lifeguard offerings this year, or excuse me, swimming lesson offerings. We're like, then maybe if you have a teenager, you want to encourage them to become a lifeguard because we, this is all we can do. We can't burn these young people out. This is what we can offer. And um, we did end up expanding a little bit once Ellen and Zoe came on mm -hmm. board, but it, you know, it's, you know, Ellie knows she's been doing this longer than anybody. It's, it's a trick. Um, but yeah, so I'll get you the job description and, and yeah, that's we'll Eric. again. Maybe we can. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he has more than just, I mean, oh yeah. Bethel and Royalton campus there, you know, there's, yeah. Yeah. We're tied to Sharon and yeah. Bridge and, you know, uh, maybe if I well, that's what we'd hope. We really thought, you know, paraprofessional. And, and like I said, mm -hmm. we've, we've been talking to people and we thought their downtime is our uptime. So exactly. There might be a little bit of but I also overlap, think but nothing teachers, big probably want a break you know so maybe they just like the summer off so anyways uh just put it out there and we've all been talking to everybody but that's eric is yeah yeah, yeah. okay sounds good what else anything else um lisa you have anything public comment uh no actually <laughs> um it would be great if we could get on like the the library could get on the one of the november uh agendas just to sure. be as you're building budgets and having sure. questions. Library budget time point. Sure. Oh, I was also going to tell you because I saw that I don't know if you've been keeping up on the saga, but that gazebo at the. At, oh yeah, what's so, up with the gazebo? I had so somebody I had ask me the other day. Well, 
So of course it's been vandalized. And then somebody took a saw to it to cut one of the poles to hold up the roof. Oh my so, God. you know, that was sweet. Yeah. So I actually asked um, Aaron Isham to go take a peek at it. And he did. And for, we could put a new roof on it for a little over $7,000. But he feels like the roof has life in it. And he, and he just said, we could fix it up and then wait in the bushes for somebody to come to vandalize it again. Yeah. We could catch him. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. So right now he, he felt that it was sturdy, that it was in good shape and that the roof had a couple more years left in it. And, and, um, but certainly would like to, you know, catch them. I just don't, why, you know, why? Just, just why? Well, I get, you know, the writings and the graffiti. I can deal with all that, but actually taking a hacksaw mm -hmm. to the next. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we're aware of the graffiti and we're aware of the issue. And I did have someone look at it to make sure it was structurally sound. And then honestly, in a couple of years, the select board's going to have to make a decision what they want to do there. So, but this one, I thought about you because I know you do the walk down there and, yeah yeah i picked up a bunch of trash down there yesterday and took it up to the partnership for their right. sweep the white event and yeah. um i mean it wasn't too awful compared to what they found in sharon and all that yeah but still yeah. i know it's frustrating it's yeah it's it could afford to be i don't know monitored a little bit more but yeah. again i don't know exactly how to do that so it, it's hard too because we we've had yeah. the police down there <laughs> more than once we've had the sheriff's office down there because we had We've had a couple of people living down there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we've dealt with that. And um, some more hours for the sheriff's department. That's right. More hours for the sheriff's department. But it's, it's just in the, look at. in the right <laughs> spot of town to be mischief. You know what I mean? It's in the back area where it's, about the park over it's off. Yeah, the, the, you know, yeah. Not many it's people drive through that at certain hours. Yeah. And yeah which just makes it easy for people to do but stuff but like again, that. Again, 24 know? hours. Yeah. It's fun enough. Yeah, no, it's true. Hey, um, but Jordan they do stop point. in there. They stop in at the, the sheriff's office every time they're in town. But they're just not in town enough to. Yeah. They make yeah. a sweep through there every time now. Yeah, yeah we need pretty to. much. That was prior to this. Yeah, you know, they stop there. They stop up at the pond. They yeah. they definitely travel around. Mm -hmm. It's just twenty four hours. Divided by enough? seven days. This it's isn't just... enough. You know, we talked about increasing the sheriff's contract. So, but yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to let you know what was going on over the case. I figured you'd seen it and wanted to make sure you knew we were aware. Yeah. Well, I go by it fairly frequently. So, mm -hmm. and go down there to do the water quality testing and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I have a sense of what's happening, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and I don't have a good answer. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah. I'm not sure there's one. But anyways, if you see something, don't hesitate to call the office. And okay. Deal with it. Okay. Anything else? Public comment? Anybody online? Now's the time. If you have it, you can just either put your hand up or, or unmute yourself. Guess not. Okay, hearing none, <laughs> we will close public comment. And we have if um, and Erica's up. here. Yep. So we can just get to Erica or five minutes ahead if you want to jump on. Sure. Uh, my name is Erica Hoffman Keith. I'm the executive director of Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation. And I have a couple of people who are joining me remotely tonight um, Isaac, who's Wagner, who's waving his hand, and then Lindsay uh, Trombley from Orange County Parent Child Center. Um, I'm here just to tell you a little bit about a project that's going on. You can pass it along for background. Um, I don't know if, how many of you are aware of the child care project that we've been working on in Randolph since 2018, roughly. Um, we thought we had it uh, to get in the ground in January of this year, but then we got our construction estimate back and we're <laughs> startled. Yeah. <laughs> um, so That's since then, we have been going back to the design as well as our capital stack to rework it a little bit. And the last piece of funding that we're bringing in at this point, um, you'll know I'm not going to go into the whole backstory because I want to be able to answer questions and have these folks answer questions if you have any, um, is a... BCDP, Vermont Community Development Program block grant for implementation of the project. We did have a planning grant back in the early days of the project. Um, and Isaac Wagner and his associate, Peter Rude, who is not with us tonight, um, have been doing that and working on that application for us. Traditionally, I don't know how familiar you are with the BCDP process, but 
Generally, the municipality where the project is located is the applicant. It, it's only municipalities are the only eligible entity. Uh, in this case, uh, Randolph had a previous application in the pipeline. And so we turned to Braintree with the blessing of VCDP as another regional municipality that was going to be served by this project and had in the past supported us with some of their ARPA funding uh, to see if they would be willing to submit the application on our behalf, their select board agreed. And one of the requests of the state was that we also talk to the other surrounding municipalities that may be served by this child care center uh, in Randolph, just to make sure that everyone knows the project is happening, is still happening, because I was assembling some of the press clippings from the past several years. I was like, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> So where we are now is um, we're focusing on the upper level to get into the building. We have several million dollars of funding that if we don't get into the building this fall, uh, we will lose. And that's federal and state funding. So we are trying to, to keep the project alive. And as I said, the DCDP funding is a lot piece of that. This project is a partnership between Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation as a developer of the property and Orange County Parent Child Center represented by Lindsay, who's on a line tonight. Um, they currently have an operation in Tunbridge, which you may be aware of. This would be an expansion for them. So the upper level that we're hoping to start construction on in the next four to six weeks, depending on how things come together, um, will provide 65 new childcare slots for the region. Wow. So that's kind of the very, very high level spiel. I didn't want to take a lot of your time, but we did want to make sure that um, we were letting everyone know what where, the state, where it stands right now, because we've had some ups and downs. And we didn't want to go to the press until we knew that there, we were on the upside. <laughs> and um, that's what will be happening next. So if you have any questions for myself or for Lindsay, who is running the operator, they're the ones who are, will be providing the childcare once the facility is complete. And um, Isaac, who is helping with the, the completion of the VCDP application. So do you have a contractor already? Yes, we have a construction man a construction manager structure mm -hmm. and HP Cummings. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're, as you know, the hotel just opened. Mm -hmm. So they're anxiously waiting to roll down the hill. Yeah. And we're waiting with an arm. So Great. we get all of the, the funding flowing in the right way. Excellent. And I might have missed it, but when do you expect to be open? We will have uh, students coming in, I believe, September next year. 2025. Okay, it's great. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Obviously, that's one thing that we hear certainly is daycare shortage, and mm -hmm. so it's going to be great. A great yeah. location, too. It right? is. It's right on 66. It is. It's less than a minute from the highway, and that's one of the reasons that I'm, I'm talking to all of the select boards for the municipalities that are right along 89, because depending mm -hmm. on which direction you're going, it's, it's going to be on the way if you're headed north. Absolutely. Have you had the opportunity to talk to the school districts in those areas as well? Because I know usually childcare is, you know, really tied with yeah. the schools pretty heavily. Well, this is because this is actually infant through pre K. Uh, so I'm right on my way. Thumbs up. Infant yes, correct. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is, a, it's beyond even the, what you generally find in association with schools. One of the interesting things is that the, that the school, the well, child care center in Randolph that was next to the school just closed. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that the, the way this model is funded, because the costs have just been so exorbitant. And aside from the cost question, the next question, of course, is staffing because that's why the center closed in Randolph, was mm -hmm. they, they needed three teachers, they could only get two. Oh, yeah. wow. So when we were putting together this, this funding picture, we really, it's almost, I wanna say 80 to 90% grant funded. We're carrying very little debt. And the intention is to carry very little debt because the only uh, lease payment that will be due from the operator is to service the debt. So the lower we can make that, the more flexibility they have to be able to respond to situations where 
they can't open mm -hmm. all of the classrooms or they have to close some of the classrooms because of staffing issues. Mm -hmm. So um, we haven't had direct communications. I have not had direct communications <laughs> with the school district, but this was out of um, a Vermont Council for Rural Development uh, community visit process back in 2018. And the task force that was put together by the town at that point in time did involve people from the school system. Because I, I I would I only say that because I was on the school board for a period of time, and you know we we have a lot of families. Obviously, you know a family might have uh, two children, and one may be in school, and may one may not be of yeah. age yet, and that's where it becomes the challenge of a parent wanting to get back to work but can't because yeah. they can't find child support, yeah, or child care, you yeah. know those types of things. And yeah. um, I know it's it was a goal in school the last few years was to try and develop child care in the area uh, yeah. for those issues. Yeah. One of the things we may be doing with the school system, um, particularly the, the career and technical training center is looking at um, some workforce development. This it's the construction itself, the design of the building integrates spaces for all of the services that a parent child center provides, which are beyond just child care, but lots of family support services. And if you have questions about that, Lindsay can give you more detail. But one of the spaces that's involved is also the possibility of doing some um, on-site workforce training. And um, that, of course, right now we're just trying to get the doors open and kids in the in the building, right. but that's part of the longer term plan. That would be great to work with the vocational center. Yes, yeah. that's terrific. The town uh, through human services supports um, Orange County Parent Child Center with regular appropriations each year through our budget. And 2023, they were able to provide 246 services to Bethel residents. So just for the record, uh, yeah, we feel it's an important that's agency. That's their operation. So this yeah. is going to be, can you speak a little bit to what uh, the, the additional child care slots, how much that brings to expand your current operation? Uh, right now, our right current child care license is for 59 students, and so this will increase it by 62. And I just want to make a quick comment regarding the school district. Uh, my understanding right now is the Randolph preschool program is at max capacity. There's a wait list, and the operating hours are shorter than what we'll be able to offer. Um, so we look at it as very much a collaboration with the school districts as well as any other child care center in Randolph. Um, and I look at it as we're kind of all in the same mix. We're trying to, we all have the same goal. Um, just as someone just stated, parents getting back to work, working full time. And so we hope to be able to provide this center um, at full capacity to serve um, surrounding towns um, with this huge child care need. Thank you. I didn't put my contact information on that sheet of paper. Um, but I'm at Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation. I'll leave my card with the chair and then you can take it from there. If you have any further questions. Isaac, do you have anything that you would like to add? Uh, no, 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 thankfully, my, probably my services are not needed at this meeting because we're not asking the town of Bethel for any administrative support, uh, which is probably a good thing for you guys. Um, but certainly, um, we're we're hoping that you're engaged uh, with the process and um, hoping that you can make sure that um, any families you know can outreach and and queue up for uh, access to the center and you know we want to make sure the public knows that this is available to you that's all i've got thank you you know that the <clears throat> excuse me bethel food shelf quite a bit and they come Someone from Orange County Parent Child Center comes Monday mornings. Um, they have some little group in the church, and when the weather's nice, they're outside by the band shell, <clears throat> and they bring us a lot of nice diapers that go quite quickly. So that's one thing that people are always in need of, and they're so expensive. So yeah, people are really appreciated at the food shelf, so they can come in and get diapers for the young ones. Well, it's interesting that you bring that, that up because you will be seeing me, you will be seeing Lindsay again, I'm sure at least once, <laughs> because this is, we're right now we're getting into the upper level. We are going to be looking at the lower level once we get shovels on the ground at this stage. And that's a, a big part of the lower level is food because that's where the kitchen is located. 
And so Lindsay and I are going to be working um, with the federal delegation actually on some specifically food security focused initiatives in terms of drumming up some funding to get that kitchen finished off. Um, I know that the chef at Gifford is very interested in doing more local uh, procurement and being a part of a kind of a buying group, if you could be locally, um, would be very beneficial. So um, that, and part of that is just, it's the, the ancillary services that people in the communities need that come through this entity that, that we really um, want to be able to support. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Here's my part. I'm sorry. That's fine. We know how to get a hold of you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll <very> find you. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's great news. All right. So we'll move forward on to the agenda. Um, we had talked briefly about it at the last meeting, uh, Bennett Law's request to be appointed to the Human Services Advisory Board. Thank department. you. We held off on the appointment last time so that um, <clears throat> Paul had an opportunity to, to talk with him, so. Yeah, I did get together with, with Bennett. We had a, a nice conversation. He does have some experience dealing with some of the agencies. And I think he'd bring a different angle into the conversation. He has some different, interesting thoughts about human services. I've also <clears throat> interacted with Gene Krause. Um, he was interested in getting on, uh, but he also sent me his, you know, feelings and opinions about human services agency support. So I think Bennett will uh, will fit well. He'll bring a bring a different angle into the conversation for sure. Okay. So we hearing that. Just need a motion to appoint Bennett Law to the Human Services Advisory Board. So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All right. Hearing none. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, thanks, Ellie. Thanks. Curiosity. Yeah, no, we'll make sure we get the minutes in there. So thank you. <laughs> And, and I think I saw in the in the minutes did um, Chuck Davis get done on the planning? You see, yep, yeah. yep. But I was wait. We had seen the yeah, so I made a note to put that on the future agenda to um, accept his his designation. Yeah, he took a position somewhere, so it's just not uh, going to have the time, which is too bad. Because so, he, what does that leave you now, Paul, on the Human Services Board? That makes five. Five, yeah. Okay. Are you looking for more, or what are you thinking? I, say, this, uh, I think we're comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. that number, um, Stan, Stan Capron and Scott Putney and Suzanne Burgos and Bennett and myself. I think that's a, a good group. Sounds like, yeah, you got a good variety. Yeah, kind of a variety of you know, opinions and counsel. Okay, nice. And we're hoping to get together uh, 26th or 27th of this month for our first meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we had a second class liquor license, tobacco and tobacco substitute for Central Market. Unless anybody has any questions on that, just need a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And Sullivan's and Powers uh, contract for their single audit here for. Yep. So they included that because I had emailed them and said, you know, going to have to have a single audit. So they sent, I think you'd already signed an engagement letter, but this one has the, um, has the basic, obviously the original fee arrangement for a basic audit. And then they're saying 6,000 for one major program and 4,000 for each additional major program. So my guess is we're gonna, <clears throat> I think we might have two majors, um, FEMA and, no, what's the other one? FEMA and maybe DWSRF. So, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm thinking, but. So it's a, uh, so anyways, that's what it is. And um, you need to 
So do we budget up. for the additional audits or is it just something that happens? No, it's just something, I mean, it's, it's sometimes, yeah. it's just something that happens. Yeah, depending on when you expend. So for us, it's gonna trigger because last year I thought we might need a single, but we didn't. Then the flood happened in July. So now all that flood damage that was obligated ended up in the last fiscal year. We also had the DWSRF project going on. So Gene, you're there, you know, you can't anticipate I didn't anticipate for a flood. I should probably budget. We could Some budget. Uh, we could budget yeah. an extra like maybe at six or something. Budget 30, even though it might be 26 yeah, or something. Budget a little extra. I mean, obviously at least six, because you'd have you'd have to have at least one major. Mm. So um, but yeah, so that's just you know, <laughs> as it floods, you're like, oh great, it flooded. And you so of course you hadn't budgeted for <laughs> you know a single. Um, so you know. It's one of those things. But yes, it's definitely something we can look at when we do the budget in the fall. Okay. Any further discussion on that? I just need a motion to motion to stay with Sullivan and Bowers for the audit. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. So I just need to sign this. Do we all have to sign? Yeah, they've got three lines, but you guys can make it work underneath. Be responsible. There you go. You gotta send them both. Yeah, they're coming the end of October. So I was actually reconciling cash today, China. <clears throat> figure out a couple things work on the depreciation schedule gave that to richard he was like what's this about <laughs> it's like what the hell? i said i could do everybody's depreciation schedule but yours because when you look at some of his invoices it's like what is like what's maintenance versus what is you know something we're actually gonna you know put on the schedule so he's like well, how long do i have i said end of the month Two of them there. Oh, it's two of them. So, yeah. So we're getting there. Is it going to take any scratching? I need you to just come in and work on a Saturday. Like, phone doesn't ring. Nobody comes in. It's quiet. You got to sneak in. Park yeah. Park some rooms. Yeah, exactly. Do it like this Saturday. On the everybody will be at Tunbridge Fair. There you go. I'm going to be in Maine this Saturday. Everybody, everybody will be going. There you go. I'm gonna be standing right in the middle of the road Saturday, whole day. Just for fun or just waiting for Chris. Collect the money. I'll just wait for Chris. <laughs> Go by. Are you here yet? Are you here yet? You Coming bet. at night. Yeah. <laughs> my God. The check those culprits in the night. In the night. Be out there with my flashlight. <laughs> Well, you do is you wait till them to get in your house and then just come out of the pucker brush and scare. <laughs> I want you to drive up the road 25 miles a minute. Stay on your side of the road <laughs> in your truck. Not possible. Uh oh, oh, I, let me see what you're I was on a dirt road the other day and I was going, I don't even know if I could even get to 35. Like, this was in a different town, like, you know, just in general. Like, yeah. Because usually when I'm on a dirt road, I kind of look down and see what my speed is in general. And it's usually like 25 or 30, maybe. And I'm thinking, I don't even know if I could do 35. Yeah. Like on they some of these roads. 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah I know. I like how do you double do down. Yeah. yeah it it's not that long of a stretch. Like you're <laughs> not <laughs> saving time. No. But I guess you're definitely not wearing tear in your vehicle. That's for sure. Getting getting worried like about that. That. I know it's people are creepy. Yeah. All right. I think it's wrong car. Driving? <laughs> Which I think is true. Maintaining the, the way you got yeah, yeah, common that's true. sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember when roads around here were great for comparison. And I drew, I've driven through Royalton, Randolph, Brookfield, Bethel. And stock in the last two weeks, and I can find a shitty road in every town. Oh, yeah, there. which Stockbridge was like pavement everywhere, yeah, not even Randolph was like pavement everywhere, not even, yeah. I hope it's 
Lack of training and not lack of care. <laughs> You're saying other towns have yeah, issues too? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I hope it's because there's lack of training, not lack of care. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I was getting a kick out of the. Good point. You know, especially springtime things. You know, people get on the, you know, the community bulletin boards and trash every highway department. And it's like, I'm thinking, I drive on so many of these things. Like every town has these same type of roads. Like they, they all fall apart. Like they, mm -hmm. no matter what, what, what town you're on. But well, our road, if you get a good, a good grinder, within within fifteen years, our road would be perfect because we're down with rock everywhere. Well, I mean, I think I, 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 you won't have to grade it ever again. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I really do amazing. think that a lot of it comes down to cost, and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, you think back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, a lot of that material they put on the roads was stuff they dredged out of the stream bed that I don't want to say was free, but it was a reduced cost to put on the roads. And they continue to do that all the time. And nowadays you can't do that. So you have to buy it from somebody and it's expensive, right? So then they're like, well, you can only do a little bit. And, you know, um, and then everything's gotten expensive. You look at all the, um, the different areas like, you know, that used to always have a four or five person town crew now has a two or a three, you know, cause they can't get people or they can't, can't afford to get people or, or everybody else is paying more or, you know, there's so many of those things going on. And I do think that Dave's right in, in the sense that in some cases it's a lost art because you have young people sure. that are not interested in, <clears throat> in doing that type of work. So I, I yeah. do think that, yeah, to some point, Dave's Dave's right. Yeah, we, only we could find a greater operator that'd be a pool director, <laughs> then would be a substitute teacher at school and everything else. <laughs> we could find that one person. Like, That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dynamite. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's right. That's right. Take possible. care of the gazebo at the. <laughs> yeah. You know. That's right. We, we could just find that person. They got to be up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it is. It's challenging. So updated policy and procedures for collection of delinquent taxes and utilities. So as you know, the <clears throat> obviously the legislature changed some stuff. So one of the things they changed uh, was abatement. So they had, there's a whole piece in here about how you can, the board can hear a group of similar requests for abatement. So that's, um, that's a big section of this. So that was just cut and pasted in there. I didn't really delve into the whole change on on um the collection of delinquent taxes just said you know that such proceedings may include tax sales c32 bsa 5252 i'm not going to go into the whole thing obviously we have to there's new rules now on how long someone has to be delinquent before you can sell their property that sort of thing and we kind of <clears throat> had already adhered to that to some extent and because we weren't selling people right May to May, May to May, May right. to May. They were always, it was later, you know, like March. So obviously we they held longer than a year. So some of the changes were really just minor um, in here. Some of it was exactly the same. Um, so the majority of the policy is the same. What mainly changed was all the abatement rules and that's copied right out of statute. So, so that's so how it, dif it differs from the one that was here before. Can we make sure that the the folks on the BCA get a copy of the new the folks that are not select board members because we've got them now, but folks that aren't get a copy of the abatement changes. So yeah, I would assume Pam aware. would have taken care of that, but I don't know. I can double check with her. I know she's doing a BCA training. Um, she's away. Yeah, um, she can just make a bunch of copies. She's away Tuesday training. through Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week at a training. Huh. Um, so she's out of town, but I will let her know. So you got to um, have something coming up in October here to do Yeah, she different. mentioned it to me the other day, but I just BCA training, um, new abatement. Because I'm sure that um, the state, Secretary of State's office probably has already issued one of those new, you know, manuals on all about abatement. You know, you're more yeah. than familiar with that. So my guess is they've updated it, but I'll ask do, her when she returns. Do you know if they updated any of the tax assessment appeal? procedures oh uh, no i don't think the, so. other, the other thing the bca does oh yeah i don't think so i think it's still the same i mean that's still you know once the new grand list is issued obviously everybody gets a change of appraisal notice so i don't believe that they changed any of that of how so and especially this 
when we do the next one, um, everybody will get a change of appraisal notice. They'll obviously bring in Nemric, so people will be able to make appointments or stop by to have the chance to grieve, and and they would deal, you know, first on for foremost, obviously with Nemric, yeah. and uh, yeah. then go. But I don't believe they change. I would any expect that things. probably this coming session that they will start thinking about that because they are pushing, you know, 65, 70 percent of the towns in Vermont to have to do a reappraisal. So you would think with that, there's going to come some some new policies well, and procedures it, and the and the if it comes up for a tax assessment appeal, then you have to have three people go out there and do an inspection and mm -hmm. try to make assessments and all that stuff based on property value that was established by somebody mm -hmm. other than you know your own listers. Exactly. So it's gonna be a complicated process. I think we'd end up something, having, something they, would, they would have to be involved because Nemrick will be our new listers, our new appraiser, assessor as well. They're gonna take over for Rick Benson. So I think that they'll end up- I would think they, would, they wouldn't be able to go out on the visit still because- you, No, they the already know it is still up, so Right, I, I think that the majority, the, I actually the, think that you will see, I don't think the BCA is gonna be overwhelmed with abatement requests. I think that once they come in and sit down and talk to Nemrick and are able to meet with them, I think it'll be, you know, at least in my experience, it's been a pretty positive exchange and they can really give, I mean, in the end, it's really about the square footage. That's what it boils down to. We all know that they're gonna change the land value schedule because it hasn't been changed in 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there'll be some changes there. And, you know, the way I look at it is people have to look, what's their assessment you know dang well that they can sell it for more than the town has it assessed at if they feel differently than that that's different but i do think it's also going to benefit people who have not had any work done in their house and have some depreciation i generally think that's the case a lot of times with mobile home owners is they have been not necessarily neglected but maybe haven't been given the depreciation that they needed in the past so i like to think that that will also be adjusted so that will be helpful. So I don't know. I'm going to be cautiously optimistic yeah. that you, you don't do see many chronic. Um, yes, you do. Free tax assessment. You do. Yes, you do. I actually already had someone come in and want how to appeal. I'm like, you can't appeal yet. You don't even know what your value is. I was like, how can you appeal? You don't even know what it is. You could be in. You could I mean, there will be a a big shock and awe. You know, I think when oh. which you know. It is going to be a, a, a big, big movement, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a, a big or any tax. Exactly. It just means that your value is there. higher. It's information on what that does to the tax rate and to your tax bill. Yeah. Because everybody thinks, yeah. not everybody, but most people think mm -hmm. that you know, I was in for 250 and now I'm 350. My taxes are going to almost double. Not so much. Not no. You're right. It may even go down. Exactly. So, because well, it might mean, but yeah. a lot of people don't, don't know that. No, and even that we have been saying that and saying that, but you're right because if the, you're putting the a similar budget amount over a larger dollar, you know, over a larger grand list, so obviously there's a lot of people's taxes will go down. So the value goes up and your tax rate comes down. Mm -hmm. But it's opposite, you know. And well, also too, I will say. People are very, very focused on the state of Vermont. The governor or somebody made the comment that the taxes were going to go up 20%. Mr. Our phone rang off the hook. And no matter, we could explain till the cows come home. That didn't happen. Your local school board was very responsible. Here's what, you know, we don't know what school tax, what's going to happen with your DMV registration or state tax, but here's. Oh, so, you know, they just, they took that one sound bite. It, it is recent as, you know, a couple of weeks ago or more when we were, you know, in July, we put out tax bills and then a couple of people, oh, my tax went crazy. Okay, let's look at, it. actually, they didn't, your prebate went down. So possibly this would be between you and the state, maybe you made more money. So this isn't actually about your taxes. This is about your prebate. And again, which, you know, we don't calculate. So um but yeah that that one sound bite and everybody heard that and so they just have been jumping to big conclusions i mean i think the one that probably people have seen that has affected their pocket is you know if you had to make it up a quarter million dollar house and you were insuring it for you know you never insure it for a quarter million but say you insured it for three hundred thousand. now all of a sudden that same house is mm -hmm. you know even though the town still says it's a set of 250 
your insurance now is four fifty for that house. Yeah, you know, right. if it burnt down today, you know, exactly. And and you're and and they didn't adjust. You're paying that extra. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like, no, you know, those have gone up. Uh, where necessarily the town true. towns won't or won't have that effect, but yeah, no, that's a good. But point. I think we will get a lot of phone calls, obviously. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's true. It'll be a bit of an education. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> well, less like anything else, we'll get through it. But um, so we know, just need a motion to uh, accept the updated policy and procedures for collection of delinquent taxes and utilities. No move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Town manager's report. So we'll talk briefly about um, the water, the service line break at GW Nolato that occurred. Obviously, that was a big deal and very unfortunate. And, and we certainly, um, our heart goes out to GW. What ended up happening was they had a six inch ductile iron fire suppression line that broke under one of their buildings. Um, we were, Richard was notified, um, with a, not by Nolato, but because he received a, an alarm saying that the, once the reservoir, reservoir yeah. gets below a certain amount, he gets an alarm. So he immediately went out and started scoping it out to see what was what. And then a tone went out to the fire department and so the fire department was on scene. They actually had just gotten to the fire station because they'd been at a touch a truck event at Warva. So their response was like three minutes. Their response time was immediate. They went in and located, obviously realized that their office building had flooded. And at first they couldn't they could see water coming. They couldn't figure it all out. And then they got down towards the basement level and like, okay, you've got about five feet of water in their basement. Um, Richard was, you know, locating a, a shutoff, couldn't find it immediately. So he went and shut down the reservoir so that and shut down the water line. So obviously we shut down any flow that we had to their building um, right away. And then we were looking for a, another shutoff. Um, we found one that was a two inch line. Richard went to the town, got the plans from the original project. And it appears that, um, you know, so he was, you know, then going that looking around and, and GW contacted WB Rogers and they were on site first thing this morning because it did happen on past the curb stop. So it happened on GW's service line. Um, so WB Rogers was there digging this morning and then we ended up um, just putting in a new valve closer to their building for them um, so that we could, so that they could get, um, their system shut down. We also waited a while because they wanted to camera their system, which we completely understood. They needed to know where it broke under their building. That's a big deal. So we were giving them, obviously we waited for them for a little while and then we ended up putting on our, our uh, valve and, and giving them a little space so that they could still get a camera system in and figure it out on their end. Um, obviously, because of where the location was, um, I was on the phone last night with a couple times with Superintendent Jamie Canarney, um, just letting him know. I called him and said, hey, got an issue in Bethel. He said, I heard. And I and I said, you know, if we can't get you water. We're we're working on it. But if we can't get this thing nailed down, you know, obviously, we know you have to cancel school. And he I have to say he was so gracious and understanding. He said, it's fine. You know, if I can't get it done, shut it. If I can't cancel school tonight, we'll do it in the morning. But I called them later and said, yep, you're going to have to cancel school. I'm really sorry. He's like, no problem. You know, I started. So they were really wonderful. We ended up having about 30 people without water. Two select board members, even the chief water operator and his family didn't have water. And uh, so it was restored this afternoon. And um, I know that uh, GW had a lot of people on site, including the fire marshal and things, because they need to make sure that their fire suppression system works on one of their buildings so that they could open back up and start work, at least one yeah. section of their building tomorrow. So I hope that that um, yeah. worked out for them. And I didn't know. I haven't spoken to anyone at GW. Um, <clears throat> so they are obviously going to install a new whole new line to the main and which makes sense you know obviously ductile iron takes a beating for a while so it was you know obviously an older line and um but that was the situation so the 30 homes including the school are going to be on a boil water notice we pulled samples this afternoon and took them to 
um, and dine in West Lebanon. Normally, because we chlorinate the system, we really only have to get one good sample. Uh, we got a good residual still, so we anticipate, but it won't be until early afternoon, mid afternoon tomorrow that we get the results back. But once that happens, all of the people will be notified once we lift the boil water notice. But when people go to school tomorrow, uh, they will be under boil water notice, which of course they're aware of. I called the office today and also let Jamie know that as well. So, um, so I just, I do want to say thank you to uh, the superintendent. He was, he was very uh, gracious and, and understanding certainly. So we certainly wish a lot of well, that's a lot of damage and um, it's my understanding the equipment and just a lot. So <clears throat> certainly I'm sure they have their hands full, but uh, Richard did say he was dealing with someone on site from DW and they were, they were fantastic. Mark was yeah. Yeah. He was great. So, um, so which was good. It was kind of a team effort. We had, and so the immediate response was the fire department, the water department and the road crew. So we certainly responded, you know, very good. So that's the update for inquiring minds about GW. Um, the rest of the stuff in the packet, talk about bird replacing a bridge uh, on Bingham Road. Oh, uh, so that's cost four. That'll come out of cost four capital money. Um, on the 12th, the road crew is going to be working on North Road. Uh, the sheriff's office is going to assist us with traffic control because it's like taking your life in your hands. It can be almost as bad as Camp Brook sometimes. Um, Pam wrote a grant for $5,000 for election so that she can get a new laptop um, and, it's, and some other things for elections. So that was great um and we did receive our small scale bike ped grant to purchase the two crosswalk rectangular rapid flashing beacons um and so we got that done i got an estimate from <clears throat> because we'd precast so i'll be able to put an rfp together for our some of our december flood damage at the pump station at bethel mills so um that will I think that's, I think once he does finish his Finley Bridge, we do that. Then it's just Sugar Hill is obviously going to be ongoing for a little bit. I didn't happen to look. Did, did they, I, I don't think they have yet, but the EV charger? Nope, nope, because uh, Josh Wardell was out of, out of state on business. So he's going to swing by and pick it up. We found the key to the box and I have the signage there as well as the charger. And I just told him I was going to need some assistance with the software end of it, figuring that out. And he said he be happy to help so <clears throat> so no he'll get that set up as he has time but it it is here so also the budget status reports in there i made some notes for you and uh and i'm gonna be off this friday knock on wood i'm trying to vacation last time i had two days off and i had covid so i was sicker than a dog so uh, I, i'm gonna try again this i'm going out of state so um I will talk to Gary and let him know I'm going to be gone. So he is always gracious enough to act as EMD for while I'm out of town. So no well, COVID. Uh, <laughs> up at Bachelors, Marion Bachelors, mm -hmm. um, they were making dinner, set off the fire alarm system that they have in the kitchen. They have a little bit of smoke from some bird zucchini or something. Oh, geez. Anyway. They were in a panic because they didn't know any of the passwords to get Tasco to call off the fire department. Oh, so no. So I ended up calling Tasco and giving them the proper mm -hmm. things. But one of the calls that they made was to the Bethel Fire Department. Mm -hmm. Dave Alleghetti answered the phone. Yep. So is there another, is there another way, <laughs> another identifying phone number for the Bethel Fire Department that it can ring through? I would think it would be. Why doesn't it ring to just he nine one one like general? Yeah, I think it's it's been forwarded to, to him, him for quite a while. I I would assume. But is but I wonder. A, well, I, my I guess my local go, number. Maybe right? go to. Well, my question is, did Tasco call Dave's cell phone number? No, no. Ta they bachelors called the fire department number that's listed in the I book. Guess, in the book. Oh, oh, Dave, I'm getting into the phone. Oh, no kidding. He's probably just forgotten. So, yeah, okay, I'll we'll talk to Gary tomorrow. I would think maybe it would better, be better off going to 911. Or... Yeah, exactly. that's interesting. Yeah, I have no idea. 
I never That's called that number. 911 ends up dispatching. Right. Yeah. Uh, isn't that interesting? No, I'll ask yeah. Gary about it tomorrow. Um, yeah, because I mentioned it to Kelly about a month or so ago, because on the Bethel website, it still had Dave's name and number on there. So she changed okay. it to Gary's. They, but, used yeah. to, they used to have all the, well, back in the day, anyways, out of college, they sold security <laughs> systems for the summer. But they used to have all the security systems tied into 911. Yeah. The problem they had in a lot of states, especially Vermont, was a lot of false alarms. Mm -hmm. And when they were tied into 911, they were dispatched immediately, where they started sometime year after that, where every fire station has a local number, not a 911 mm -hmm. number. So they those those systems now call the local number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just in case it's a false alarm, then you're not dispatched the whole fire department now. So my guess mm -hmm. is the local number is tied to, you know, Dave has his number. Yeah. That number is yeah. forwarded to his cell phone or whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah. we Because nobody's there to pick up the phone. Yeah, the fire I, can have, you know? um, so, I can have Kelly fix that. So probably that, that number but probably needs to get no forwarded to whoever the acting, you know, if that's Gary or whoever is acting. <laughs> and then the other fellow there. Um, went up to the bachelor's, um, the, the assistant chief. Greg Timmons. Greg Timmons. He showed up at the house. Yeah. He tried to get on the phone with Tasco and they shut him down. Oh, geez. You gotta have you have to have the passwords numbers yeah. and passwords. I've, I've and got ours laminated all sorts of stuff. in my phone so that we have them. So I have them for here. So that when they call, I carry them with me. So, <laughs> so they know you're you're the person. So yeah, my I have set, yeah. Kelly has set, and um so interesting. Okay, Oswald well, as well. Okay. Yeah, well, that's great information. And, I, they, and they have since redone all the passwords and everything. Well, Pasco, so good, good. They all know the kids have their own stuff. Oh, she's okay. Well, that's good. I didn't realize. I know uh, David forwarded me a message the other day that he'd gotten, and yeah. so that he forwarded to me, and then I sent that's something passwords. you don't think of. No, right? I mean that number. Yeah, is, it, we, is it usually used, you know, I mean. Exactly. Yeah. So oh, yeah. good to know. Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll get that rectified. This last thing Dave needs is that. <laughs> so other than that, I think that. And, and then the project on Sand Hill starting soon? Yes. Yeah. So we're starting. Uh, I can't. We have a meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. So uh, no, 9 a.m. It was 9 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah. Red, just saying. Yeah, no, 9 a.m. tomorrow. We have a meeting here <laughs> um, about that. So um, oh. I know the road crew was going to be, was supposed to be replacing a culvert on Bicentennial before that gets paved today. But obviously they were tied up at GW. So um, he just said, we'll get it done, you know, before they paved. So it was just a culvert that we wanted done. And like, why not? You don't want to cut into new pavement a couple years from now. Not like a couldn't do it now. Ah, so okay. uh, we had the select board meeting minutes from the 26th of August. Unless there's any amendments to it, and a motion to approve. No move. Okay. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. I put the um, forward fest thing on the table, but um, and <clears throat> also Owen wanted to make sure that you had, um, which is also in your packet, your invitation to the book crew for Tuesday, September seventeenth. I know uh, you'd picked up a book, right, Dave? Yeah. And um, so that's what's in there as well. And interesting book. Is we it? had the planning commission was the only meeting minutes that we had in there. I uh, so the only I had already talked to Therese earlier. Just looking through the the um, the water and sewer accounts. Usually, you know, usually you don't really look at the past 30 and maybe even the past 60 because you know some people pay it a month later or you know but there was mm -hmm. i don't know 50. the over 120s and it sounds like that's just one, one or two accounts mm -hmm. um, and the one account that's the biggest pays 
it's we go through this on a regular basis. They get far behind and then they send us a check. So it's they're already on a vacancy rate. And um, so I have offered them to come to the select board to talk about, um, you know, their property, this and that. And they've always declined. So they pay it just times they're late. So as far as taxes go, I think that's not bad. We have obviously people on payment arrangements and um, there's, I think the oldest one was really just one person. It's just it was a small, it's a tiny amount that they actually owe. So we've kind of haven't put them up for tax sale just because it's, you know, for just a few hundred bucks, it's not worth the hassle because you can only charge back 15% of the um, legal fees towards it. And obviously it would cost us that to do the research on the property. Um, so what's the easiest way of just cleaning that up? Is it, do you just leave it out there forever or can you, can the town do an internal write-off to just clean it? I mean, you'd it, have to go small. to the, you'd have to go to the BCA and they could, but, but at this point, it, somebody wants to buy the property. Yeah. So they have tried, they've approached the owner but this is a, a situation which happens frequently. Somebody owns a portion, like they divvy it up. They leave everybody a tent in the property. People pass away and they never carry it forward in their will. So now for an order for the someone who's left, they'd have to go back and reopen, you know, probate or this or that. So that's actually the situation here. Um, the gentleman who was paying the taxes, I think there's a couple people involved and and their um, estates have been closed and it's like an acre on Gilead. And um, so at some point we'll probably tax it because I know somebody wants to buy it. So we'll probably just tax sale it just to get rid of it because the owner can't do it without going back through probate. So we've actually had a couple of these. Mm. It's kind of uh, more than a couple. And um, so that's what happens when you divvy it up between too many people. Any other business to come before the board? Maybe before eight o'clock, Dave. I'm being very quiet. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I just need a motion to adjourn. So second. All right. Thank you, everybody. I'm gonna uh